What's good everybody? I'm DJ Sam from Astralis R6 and in today's video I'm going to bring you my top 5 underrated operators. In this video I'm going to be going over their loadouts, why I think they're underrated, and also the best things about these operators. As usual be sure to stick around to the end of the video to see in-game examples of a couple of these operators being used. I got a crazy clutch on one of them so I'm pretty sure y'all want to stick around to see that. Trust me it'd be worth your while. But I've rambled long enough, here we go, let's get into the video. My number five. I'm gonna throw y'all with a loop for this one, but I'm putting Warden in this spot. Yes, sir, Mr. Secret Service. I'm gonna protect the president himself. FBI, kick the door in. Y'all not gonna get into my sight. Warden. So, first, I'm gonna go over his loadout. So, a lot of people pretty much will say Warden is a bad operator just because, for the same reason of not only his gadget is kind of iffy to some people but the gun too he has the same gun as valkyrie and we all know how people feel about that gun they think it's a pea shooter so what i run on it is the 1.5 like i told y'all i'm visually challenged so i need to see everything on my screen or i'm gonna turn into mr with shots so i need the 1.5 on mine and the compensator actually if you see from the graph here everything in terms of recoil this gun is pretty good the thing is the damage though is why people don't like to use it and i'll run a vertical grip too because you know i can't control recoil all that good if i run an angle my recoil is gonna be sent to the upper room it's, as y'all can see look the recoil is tight on the vertical and then if you switch it to the angle they spaced out a little bit more it's still not all that bad but i'm gonna get the best chance of getting the killer too if i run a vertical grip now the thing is with warden right i know a lot of y'all are looking at me like is this man crazy or about to turn this video off look listen listen let me let me explain let me explain okay he may be extremely situational but this man's potential of denying plants is unparalleled like he can turn the secret service glasses on and then he'll be able to see through smoke and he can't get flashed now with the most recent flash rework and even if you look away you're going to be flashed come on now like i said it might be situational but if they want to run a ying or a lot of teams are being like flash heavy pushing in the site you might want to switch the operator that you're running in order to see and get a pick or two and bring my man's warden i'm telling you but like i said warden extremely situational he can see through smoke he doesn't get flashed i think people should bring him more if other enemy teams decide to smoke stuff out and go for plants and stuff like that so it just depends on how the enemy team is playing but warden is my number five in my top five underrated ops i probably threw y'all for a loop for that one yeah but guess what he ain't moving we going on to number four and my number four is gonna be castle look at the fit though y'all know this video wasn't gonna be over by the time i had to say something about the fit right and the black guys look at your boy so the same thing with warden and valkyrie the guns on these operators are kind of iffy right in terms of recoil, the recoil is not bad on the UMP at all, right? The the thing that comes into consideration when you're playing these operators is pretty much the damage that it puts. A lot of people tend to shoot to the body and try to get kills like, you know, shooting at people's chests and stuff like that. But like I said, with Warden and Valkyrie, when you're running those guns, if you aim for the head, you don't really have to worry about it. So Castle, the thing with Castle is he's great for controlling whole sides of the map. And I'm going to explain after I go over his loadout a little bit. So what I run on my UMP, same thing, visually challenged. So I got the 1.5 scope, the compensator for the recoil. I like to spray a lot. The, the flash hider, you know, it, it's a little tighter right here on the graph, but the compensator feels good to me. So that's what I run on the UMP. Same thing with Valkyrie's gun. The vertical grip i should try running angled honestly more so i can be ready for fights but for now the vertical grip is what i'm running so the recoil doesn't send me to the upper room now castle he has the super shorty that they took away from mozzie recipes mozzie that was a long time ago so we all used to that by now but so he has the ability to make rotates and stuff like that and that goes into his ability to control the whole size of the map and also with the proximity alarms and the bulletproof camera, whichever one you decide to bring, he's a great intel gatherer. Like he might not be able to have like a bunch of Valkyrie cams and stuff like that. But if somebody breaks a barricade or somebody crosses the proximity alarm or 
you see somebody on the camera, even if they melee it, you can still get sound calls. He can literally control the whole size of the map by himself. So say if you're playing on theme park, I know a lot of people to decide to ban this map, but if you have a horrible map pool and theme park is one of them and you have either theme park, favela or skyscraper, I'm pretty sure y'all going to ban skyscraper and favela. If y'all playing favela, I don't know what to tell you in all honesty, but what we tend to do when I'm playing is ban those two maps, right? So we end up playing on theme park. And if you go defend the bunk site, what I like to do with castle is I will go and castle off initiation. I'll reinforce the walls. I will castle off the bathroom into cash and also the waiting room door, which is like the middle hallway. So I would do those three castles and reinforce the office wall and the cash or not the cash wall, the initiation wall. So I won't be able to get pushed easily from those sides. And then I'll just pretty much put a camera in the dragon hallway to watch the waiting room hallway because a lot of people like to push that area and then i just wait like i will literally control that side of the map with castle and they have to get through me and my barricades before they even make it to break the wall to get into sight you know and then they still have to deal with the wall denial if we choose to bring that they still have to deal with any type of rumors that might be downstairs like it's a lot for enemy team to deal with so they're not going to be ready for it and then it's going to be hard for them to get through it so I will show an example at the end of the video of what I mean when I'm doing this or what I mean by controlling the whole slice of the map with Castle by himself. But the recoil on his gun is not bad. His shotgun ability to make rotates is not bad. He has intel from the proximity alarms and cameras. And also when his barricades are broken, people can't just rush areas or run through it. You'll know they're coming and you can get ready for a fight. The one thing that you should not do and the one mistake that people will do when they bring castle is they will castle their teammates into the site do not do that castle is for denying entry to places that you have to get to to blow walls or something you get to before site that's what he's bought for you don't castle doorways like well you can it's possible like if you go in throne room like you can castle the split door or something like that but you don't castle off site so that the team can drop a hatch or something like that. And then your roamers, if they get past them, they can't get back in the site and contest the site because it's castle. So do not do not be that person. Do not castle your team off from areas. Do not cut off people's rotates. Don't do don't do that. Don't be that individual. When I play castle, like I said, the initiation site, I castle like the dragon area and cast. I castle all that off, but my team can still come up yellow. They can still come up arcade stairs. Like there's ways for my teammates to get back upstairs to site when we're playing bunk and I don't castle them off from those rotates, if that makes sense. So you can't go wrong if you bring them, except if you do what I just said. That's my number four. But now we're going to go into number three and that's going to be Wumai. Before we move on to the next operator, today's video is brought to you by Root Insurance. With Root Insurance, you can get a rate primarily based on how you drive. Good drivers can save up to $900 a year with Root. The holidays are coming up. It's going to be good to have a few extra dollars in your pocket. I know y'all seen some of these games that's dropping. So I'm pretty sure you want you know, have a little bit to go ahead and get them or not. Splurge a little bit. Enjoy yourself. So download the Root app today to see how much you could be saving with Root. And you can save hundreds, so be sure to get it. And also, I want to say really fast, be sure to grab the Disrupt Gaming Skin from the store. It's not going to be there much longer, and as many of you know, Astralis has acquired Disrupt Gaming. So if you want this rare skin, be sure to grab it while you can, because you won't be able to get it for much longer. The skins are available for the R4C and the L8, so go ahead and snatch them up. But with that being said, let's get back to the video. So now that brings me to my number three, which is Wumai. So I did another guide that's actually on the channel right now. If you guys want to check that out on like a full extensive, like how to use him and stuff like that. So now I'm not really going to focus really too in depth in him right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I run on him and why I think he's underrated. So as of recently, when I made the other video, I was an MP5 person because, you know, I was really primarily running this black ice and I could not let that thing go. But now I have become an AUG user on Wumai. And the reason is this, the the AUG is like a heavier hitter. It does more damage and it's more forgiving on if I were to miss shots or if I don't aim for the head when I shoot, I can still be able to get those kills if 
I run the AUG, pretty much. So I have converted myself from an MP5 to an AUG user. The fire rate is a little slower than the MP5, but the damage, you do 12 more a shot. So I have seen the light, for lack of a better word. So on the AUG, I run a hollow because they don't really have the 1.5 available on the one mod. That would be a little bit OP for defense. Then that would definitely be like just an IQ on defense, pretty much. Not with her gadget, but you know, with her fragging potential. So with Flash Hider, I run this with a holographic and a Flash Hider. Flash Hiders, I've come to learn, are pretty much one of the most used barrels on every gun in Siege, in all honesty. But in addition to the good guns, that's pretty much not the only reason that I run him. A lot of other people will be like, yo, Jaeger is still good, blah, blah, blah. But it's like a lot of people have come to just, it's Flash galore now, like, Especially in Crystal Guard, they run flashes like crazy. So you can bring the Jaeger, yes. But a Jaeger having three ADSs is not going to be enough to stop a team from getting the wall. A, a three ADSs with like six flashes is not going to be enough. And pair that with a Yin too and her Candelas. And the abilities to burn ADSs with her Util too is not going to be enough. So definitely, if you want to stop a team from bringing a wall or breaking a wall, well, Maya is definitely an operator that you want to bring. So pistol wise, I don't really do that. I don't really use the pistols a lot, but if I need to, if I'm not really making holes to put a proximity alarm in with the Kuratos, I'm pretty much gonna run the P12 because the Kuratos only has six bullets in, in the magazine. So I'm not really a fan of like the revolvers in this game, but I use it to make holes to put proximity alarms in and I like to hide them so that teams can't, you know, just hear the beep and then shoot them. So. That's what I use that for. But if I want to use or make rotates or stuff like that, I'll run an impact and I'll just put the P12 on with a muzzle brake. That's pretty much the only thing that I can run. I don't use lasers because if I'm holding angles, teams can see where I'm holding the angle from because the lasers on the wall. So I don't really like to run yet lasers, but that's just me. I might have talked a little fast there, but hopefully y'all understood all that. And the reason that he's making this list is because Pretty much his soft roam potential is elite. What I mean by that is he has the ability to hold down sites or hold down areas that's close to sites. And he can actually be a roamer if you decide to use him that way. Like the different ways that you can use him are insane. The strongest is basically if you're holding clubhouse and putting him on rafters. That is the strongest hold for what my in my opinion. A lot of people like to put pressure on Garage, so having him there and him not being able to get naded, him not being able to get flashed because, you know, the stuff is going to go into his gadget. If they were to push Garage, like, you know, Capital Arrows, if they were to try to flame it, his Magnus will stop that. He he is a strong operator to bring in instances like this. And I see Jaeger played a lot more than I see when my played, and I really don't know why. Maybe because people think that the infinite ADS things are better than having a one magnet use, but the time frame that it takes for the ADS to come back online, you might as well bring up one my there too in order to stop the util until the the ADS come back online. Like him, him pairing him with Jaeger is way better than having Jaeger by himself. Maybe y'all see him run a lot more in the elos that you're in, but definitely if you have problems holding down sites or you have problems holding down areas that are close, like the garage example I gave on Clubhouse, bring the Wumai, bring the AUG, bring the proximity alarm so you can know when people are pushing you, and I guarantee you, you will start winning more rounds. Trust me, a lot of people that have looked at the with my video like i went back through the comments and they said they got him and they like using him and stuff like that trust me bring this man into your comp and you will be able to win more games that's what's going to the number third spot the number third that's what's going to the number three spot one take drake now we're going to get into number two and that's going to be mr capital so I've done pretty much three defenders. And now I know y'all are saying, wait, what about the attacking side? Now I saved my top two. My top two are going to be attackers. I got something for y'all too. Don't worry, all right? So number two, like I said, is Mr. Capital. Mm. The thing with his loadouts, right? You can either run the LMG or the Para. They're both good guns. In all honesty, I like running the Para because I'm a little bit aggressive. 
and look at the recoil like look at the graph everything is close it's real close together yeah it's fuzzy a little bit but for the most part your shots are going to hit so this is my favorite gun to run on him i don't really use the lmg all that much except if i'm using zofia because ubisoft did something to her recoil that i do not like at all but that's the topic for another day and a lot of people don't really like this gun because it shoots slow i don't really feel that i think it's a good gun in its own right i like to run the 1.5 on it like i said the flash hider is pretty much the barrel to run in siege so i slap that on there too and i'm recoil challenged i can't really shoot all that well so i need the vertical grip to control my recoil and what a lot of people misunderstand with capital is first of all he has the flank watch because he has claymores but he also has the potential on if your hard breacher goes down he does have this hard breach charge to still open walls and he can still execute with his gadgets so what it depends on what i'm pushing or what my team comp is on like if i run a claymore or a hard breach or not if we have a maverick a thermite and a habana there's no point in me running the hard breach charge like that's just if all three of them go down before i do like listen I, we, me and my team are going to have a strong conversation i'm running the claymore in that in that situation so but if people don't want to play hard breach and i want to play the capital for execution or something like that i'm definitely bringing the hard breach charge now what a lot of people do and what a lot of people i don't know why people don't play this man is this man's gadget is he has one of the heaviest util kits i've seen in siege in all honesty he has smokes he has fire he has claymore he has a good gun the man is just outfitted he can literally be a one-man wrecking crew in all honesty he can smoke out areas to execute the plant or if you have a teammate fake a smoke and bait out enemy team's nitros, you could do that too. He can flame out areas to buy time so people can't push you or push up on you and kill you when you're planning. Like his his potential or what he brings to the team is so high core that I don't even know. I don't even know if high core is a word, but I used it. It's it's like so high potential that like i don't understand why people don't play this man a lot more i've been having a lot of fun playing capital in all honesty and it's even won me some a lot of games where like if he wasn't there or if i wasn't on him and i wasn't like flaming areas off there could be the potential of like the enemy team just pushing up and killing my teammate while he's playing it like i may i may whiff a shot you know like i, I like i don't know what can happen but the fact that i'm able to flame off those areas and buy my team time in order to get a plant down or maybe if they need to cross an area or something like that the ways that you can use his util is crazy so if you're having trouble executing plants or stuff like that bring a capital bring a thermite maybe you could bring somebody there that can see through smokes like a glass or something like that the things that you could do with him are just insane definitely run him more he has a good gun a good kit he's taking my number two spot but that ain't all we got now we got somebody else somebody that i don't even see played less than capital like i see a little bit of capital but this man that i'm about to mention now i don't really see him a lot and you know what's crazy he was really hyped when he first dropped and then the hype just kind of fell off but i didn't lose hype for your baby i didn't lose hype for him at all we bringing Sam Fisher to the stage, y'all. Mr. Zero, Mr. Sam, step to the front of the podium. Let me talk to you for a little bit. He's my number one. Let me tell the people about you. It seems I need to remind the people of your greatness. What makes him underrated is his gadget. Siege, I will never stop saying this. Siege is a very intel heavy game. You need to know what the enemy team is doing you need to know where they're playing you need to know what type of operators they have where the gadgets are so you could destroy them you need to intel is a crucial thing in siege and zero is kind of like a valkyrie on attack well he is a valkyrie on attack if valk and twitch had a baby it would definitely be sam fishing his cameras or his gadget are the most crucial thing in his kit right and the thing is people focus so much on the twitch buff and what they did to twitch right but they forget that zero 
you could do that you could do the same thing not have your drone or say your drone in there to shock the stuff off the wall but his cameras can shoot the stuff off the wall now twitch may be able to do it at a higher frequency because she can shoot three lasers or two lasers right and sam can only shoot or zero can only shoot one and then it has to recharge right the intel aspect that he has is far more than what twitch can get the fact that you're able to shoot your camera at a floor and you can either view that floor that you shot it at or you can switch the angle or you can switch the camera angle and it can switch to see the area that's below the floor so say if you shoot it at the main lobby floor on chalet right you can see that main lobby you can see fireplace or you can switch your camera to see the basement and you can use that to destroy the util off the wall so you don't have to send a drone through a drone hole and have it get shot because people are normally watching that anyway or if it's or if it's muted and there's an ads there so you can't destroy the stuff but if you push the top floor and you shoot a camera in that floor and you switch it and you destroy the stuff off the wall the team might not be ready for it they might not be ready for it maybe a lot of people might think he's hard to use a lot of people might think there's more crucial operators to bring in a kit or in a team comp or something like that. But to me, Zero is extremely underrated. In a util heavy game, like where there's a lot of stuff, you have ADSs with my magnets, banded batteries, cage chargers, mute jammers, like a lot of stuff that you have to actually work on getting off the walls so you're able to push areas or not even get off walls, but just get out of areas. And on top of providing intel like an actual camera you can't go wrong with playing sam fisher but you know you gotta know what you're doing you can't just put your cameras up anywhere in a tree or something like because somebody they're not gonna hop out like you you're not playing defense you're you're on attack so you need to put your cameras up in to watch flanks to watch sight use it to, as util to destroy things off the wall for your team maybe you don't have a maverick maybe you don't have a twitch maybe your twitch drone has been destroyed you can't get it through a hole it's anything like that sam fisher is the answer to all your questions they forgot about you sam they forgot about you but i didn't baby i didn't forget about my man sam fisher is definitely taking the number one spot so as promised at the end of the video, I'm going to show you in-game examples of these operators or a couple of operators working in ranked games so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Because a lot of the times, I'm not really like the best explainer. Some of y'all are visual learners and, you know, you can see better than you can understand someone like, you know, explaining things to you. That's not a knock. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying I'm a visual learner too. I like to see things rather than hear people say them to me. People have told me a lot of stuff and it's going in one ear and out the other, but I need to see, you know, I need to see to believe. So I got uh, some real world examples for y'all that I'm going to let play. And I'm going to come back after you see these rounds. So we're going to roll that footage, baby. Wow. Yeah. What's going on here? Oh, my boy Piper, he got this. One going towards freezer. That's an old sub. That man. That new off is so annoying. Oh, not. Oh. Well, I'm planting, I think. Defusing freezer. No, no, no. There you go. You know where the last one had freezer. Maybe. No. Oh, it's Ace. It's Ace. You got this. I got eyes on defuse. I got eyes on defuse. I hear me. Oh my god. Sorry, Mira. I ain't never seen my boy lose. Oh. I ain't never seen my boy lose, dude. Right. Yeah, he's red. He's red. We're on red. I got him. Is there stuff on the wall? Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's 
I got it. Um, Watch out, smoke, 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 smoke. You can get the other side of the wall too, if you want. Vox on ping four. She's prone. She's dead. Yeah. Call in, call in again. Call in again. Ready? Uber, you got the bomb, oh, wait, by the way. That's not right, man. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, PM he was. PM, brother. Oh, not PM. Oh, Lord. Not PM. Oh, no. <laughs> he's, he's like happy, bro. Yo, this, this can see, uh, the cams can see the bomb. Smoke Yo, I here. saw the fight like happening with your silhouette. I was like, oh, not Pia. Not Pia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it for me for this video, guys. Hopefully, this helps you out. Hopefully, this allows you to win more ranked games, figure out what operators that you can incorporate into your play style, and helps you become a better player. Be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the Astralis R6 channel if this helps you out. Also, speaking of which, we have a lot of stuff on the Astralis R6 channel that y'all should check out. To make y'all better players, we always looking to help you improve. So go ahead and head over to the channel, see what we got for y'all, you know? Browse a little bit, splurge a little bit. We here for you. But like I said, that's it for me, Astralis, as usual. Thanks for having me, it's been a pleasure. And I will catch y'all next time.